Hello everybody, it is Kellaxon here. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should become patrons over on Patreon if you guys want to support the channel. So today we are going to be talking about the fact that Ruby Volume 6 will only be on Rooster Teeth. So we are going to go over uh, some questions, some comments, some valid concerns, and some people that are being whiny little bitches. So that is basically what we are going to be talking about today. But first we are going to talk about the uh, journal post that was posted. So we have decided that Ruby Volume 6 uh, will live only on Rooster Teeth. It will be available for first members members uh, for one week, then be totally free to watch thereafter. So they go into explaining, um, you know, why YouTube is trash, basically. Uh, YouTube isn't the right place anymore for some of our content. We won't stop putting shows on YouTube because it's still important to us in many ways. Um, but in the end, we don't control our own destiny when we put our, when we put our shows somewhere else. And so um, they go on to say many of their videos have been demonetized, uh, restricted, you know, for all of these uh, sort of reasons. They show a picture of, of a Gus uh, tweet that he posted where YouTube um, puts limited or no ads on a video that is how to make a successful online video, uh, which is a red versus blue, um, parody thingy, uh, video or whatever, PSA, I don't know what they are, I don't watch red versus blue, but anyway, basically, YouTube sucks ass, so <laughs> that is what we are getting at here. Watch me get demonetized, but, um, they're taking a hit by continuing to focus on YouTube, so they're gonna focus on their own site. Um, so they basically go in and talk about some concerns. So first, closed captioning. A lot of people are worried about closed captions. That is a very valid concern. Uh, they are going to be basically working on it, and closed caption support will be coming for Ruby Volume 6, so that's good. Uh, Chromecast support, I don't know what that is. Uh, tap to rewind and fast forward, and last but not least, in-app video downloading for paying members. So all of that is pretty cool. The in-app video downloading will be uh, good for us especially um, who are sort of on the go uh, reactors and analysis and all that sort of stuff uh, so remember that Ruby volume 6 does premiere on the 27th so anyway as we continue and uh, move swiftly onward you could say um, you guys have some questions some comments some concerns and like I said some of y'all I don't know what to do with some of y'all. I don't think anybody who is like that category watches my videos. You guys are usually very nice, very understanding, and very respectful, but let's get into it. A second concern, other than closed captions, that I think is valid is about reactions. People are concerned about reactions, but if you guys have noticed, they've sort of been using Nomad as a test run, and we've been able to react to Nomad. So basically, Rooster Chief's rules are, hey, you can upload your reaction after it becomes public for everyone. It being off of YouTube doesn't change that. It is still public for everyone just on the website. So we've been able to upload our reactions to Nomad of Nowhere, no problem. I've even gotten some comments on my videos by Rooster Teeth staff, so obviously they're okay with it. You know what I mean? They're not like, like, oh, take this down, you know what I mean? Like, they're giving praise or support or like, hee hee hee, can't wait to see what you guys react to what comes next or whatever they say, I don't know. That's just like, that's, I can think of some examples, but usually they just say we're glad you enjoyed it we look forward to seeing blah 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 next week um, I've gotten a couple of those so anyway Nomad has been a test run so if you guys have noticed Nomad has been premiering for first members been free on the website that's when I post my reaction and then it's actually been uploaded to YouTube a couple weeks later so it doesn't mean that Ruby will never be on YouTube it just means it won't be on YouTube like it was last year and maybe on YouTube maybe a month after a couple weeks after two weeks after right because Nomad of Nowhere had episode 9 come out I think on YouTube a couple days ago even though the website is on episode 11 so that kind of puts it all in perspective so if you are a reactor do not worry you will still be able to react Rooster Teeth does not like does not mind it. They do not think that you are stealing from them or anything like that. The last concern that people have is reach. Uh, a lot of people are worried if Ruby is going to be able to reach new audiences if it's on the website. I'm personally not concerned about this for a couple reasons. First of all, you have to watch the other seasons, right? So if somebody's trying to get into Ruby, right, they have to start on YouTube first, watch all the seasons, and then get into volume six. And if they're a fan, they'll just look on the website. And I think... Like, I, I remember somebody mentioned something about, like, casual fans. Casual fans aren't gonna give you your money. So, it's like, not that- I don't think that RT doesn't care about the casual fans, but I'm gonna talk about this later. If people that currently watch Ruby can't be fucking bothered to move on the Rooster Teeth website, not only is that lazy, but you're a casual, you're not gonna give them 
your money. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a casual fan, you aren't gonna be a paying member anyway, so it's not like, oh, we don't care about you, but you're not a paying customer, so it's like, I don't think they're worried about that. I think they've taken a calculated risk and decided that not posting on YouTube makes them more money because of people going on the website and becoming first members than posting on YouTube and keeping a casual audience. Like, Bad comparison, but obviously I have my Patreon, right? And I had a public server and I had a private server. The private server has given me more pledges than the public server, even though the public server drew more people in. The exclusivity of the private pledges made my pledges go up. So it's like, you guys understand what I'm saying? It's less people, but more paying customers. That's what's important, right? Um, now let's get into concerns that I think are whiny and bitchy. Um, so sorry, I'm not pulling any punches, okay? Because all I've seen are whiners, bitches, and people throwing fucking temper tantrums at RT in their comments because they feel entitled to get things for free. And you can still get it for free on the website just a week later. And like, the whiny adults especially should know nothing comes for free, right? They, they probably have jobs and they're still complaining anyway. Like, you need to pay for everything. And it astounds me that people, like, especially adults, I'm gonna talk about teenagers later, because I was a teenager when I started watching Ruby, right? Um, like, it astounds me when people complain about a $4 first membership, but somehow afford, like, buying a $2 coffee every day, or even a $1 coffee every day. That's $30 a month. Y'all are saying you can't go without at least four coffees and, like, you know, put that into the site membership? I think it's just people being tight about their money, and they don't, like, value, like, the- the fan- or the- art piece enough. They don't value the show enough that they can't spend those four dollars to get it early if they really want to. Like, I wish that the people that were whiny and bitchy would boost the fandom that they claim to care so much about instead of stealing from the people that made the fandom in the first place. That's all that I'm trying to say, alright? So if you're part of the group that doesn't want to type in the Rooster Teeth site in your address bar, you're just lazy, okay? Or you're a casual fan and it, you don't care about the show that much to put in those, you know, that in your address bar, basically. Casual viewers probably won't go hunting for the shit. They probably won't even bother to go on the RT site. But they also not, aren't gonna pay, right? So business-wise, like, we don't care about you. <laughs> and I'm not speaking on behalf of RT. I'm just saying, like, business-wise, any business doesn't care about the non-paying customers. Obviously, you want to turn them into paying customers, but if they're really that casual, you can't. So it's like, right, you know what I mean? You gotta use their website. If that's too much for you and you really cannot be bothered, that says a lot more about you than it does, like, like I could ever say about you. So, you know, we're, we're just, we're moving on, alright? Literally some keystrokes, okay? And if it troubles you guys so much, just bookmark it after the first time you type it in, okay? Anyway, if you're in the camp that complains about the website, Hunter and I have never had problems with the website and the app, at least since it's updated. So, and that goes for a lot of us. I even saw, I think Arnold, Murder of Birds, if you guys don't know, put something on Twitter to the effect of, like, he wonders sometimes if it's the user, not the website, right? Because the majority of us seem to have no issues, but people bitch about the site all the time. Use an updated browser. Do not run it on your dinosaur computer and effect, like, expect everything to be okay. Like, get your internet checked, you know what I mean? I've never had issues on Chrome. I've always had issues on older browsers. Like, I have an old version of Chrome on my computer. If you guys have seen some of our videos where I show my screen, it's the little blue one, and then there's, like, the full colorized version of Chrome. On the little blue one, I can't run some YouTube videos, and I can't run the RT site. On, like, the fully, like, uh, Chrome one, I, I don't understand why there's a color differently either. I guess one's supposed to be like, hey, it's older, don't use this, and the other one is, like, bright and vibrant, like, hey, use this one, right? I don't suffer any issues, so the site problems are probably your fault. I'm not saying all of them are. Obviously, the site has bugs. We're working out the bugs. They're working out the bugs. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like, um, it's one of those things where it's like, I say we're working out the bugs because, like, for us, if you guys have a bug, you can, like, identify maybe what the bug is and, like, send it to them and say, hey, you gotta fix this. And then, you know, if we send them the bugs, they'll work on the bugs. But I think that when the majority of us don't suffer issues, it says a lot more, maybe, about the people that are trying to run things, like, on their, like, outdated browsers, or, like, on their, like, super old, like, you know, cell phones and any of that, and then they complain, but it's like, hey, maybe update your iOS, 
maybe update your computer, you know what I mean? Like, your browser, I, maybe your computer I don't think matters so much in the equation, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say, especially with the app. Like, you can't even run some apps on, like, iPhones and whatever if your phone isn't updated, so it's like, update your goddamn phone. And I don't mean buy a new phone, I just mean update the phone that you already have. But basically, what I'm trying to... What I'm trying to say is, you know, don't blame the website. Sometimes it's the website, but if, again, if you find a bug, send it to them. I'm sure they'll be happy enough to fix it. But I don't think it's always the website. That's all that I'm trying to say. And they've updated the website recently. If you had issues before, right, I understand that. I had issues before, but I'm saying people are still holding on to those issues before not knowing that the website has been updated. So they need to, you know, go check to see if their info is still valid. There's also people complaining that this creates a fandom divide, okay? And I have, like, a whole video planned out on talking about how fandoms get toxic. This is sort of part of it, um, but we're- that's a whole other video, so wait for that. And it does create a divide. That's the point, and so I don't understand why people bring this up as an issue. Like, do you guys not understand how this works? The entire point of paying for a membership is that the rewards are worth it. Like, I don't know, like, if people are ignorant or, like, just whiny, but, like, this is how money is made. There is no point in paying for a membership if the rewards aren't or are barely better than non-paying members. There's supposed to be a divide, so the first members are satisfied as they look down on the non-paying members and go, man, I'd hate to be that bitch, and the non-paying members are supposed to look up at the first members and want what they have. I don't think the three-day difference that they used to have that people want Right, because what they did before was first members, three days later, free site accounts, then YouTube a week later from the first member date, right? I don't think that three days makes a difference to people. I don't think it entices people enough. A full week is enough to entice someone to get that four, that, like, measly four dollars out of their pocket, which, again, like, I'm like, guys, it's four dollars, but we'll get to that later. Like, this argument is annoying because y'all act like the divide is gonna cause some sort of fandom war or anything, but it- the- Divide is good. It means that they make money. It's their business model. When people complain, oh, it's gonna cause a divide, you're basically saying, oh, this is gonna cause a divide. Good job, guys, because this is exactly what you were trying to achieve. A big enough divide so people will give you their money. <laughs> Which is why I don't understand why people complain about that. You're basically saying, ah, good job. You know, like, th thank you for achieving what you were trying to do. And obviously, like, they aren't trying to cause, like, a fandom war. They aren't trying to cause... There's a fly in here or something. They aren't gonna, tr like, they're not trying to cause people to fight about this, but no one's going to. Like, the fandom is still intact, guys. Don't worry. And I'm gonna do, like, a whole video, again, on how fandoms get toxic. This sort of attitude of, like, oh my god, guys, the fandom is burning down. Like, that's part of it. Y'all gotta fucking chill, okay? There's also people, usually teenagers, I think, who complain that they can't pay. Adults do this too, but I find that this argument is mostly said by teenagers. Like, I'm a teenager, I don't have any money, right? And I do understand, okay? It's hard to find a job as a teenager, but... And I think that I've been very, like, lucky in the opportunities that I've gotten. Obviously, I'm here making you guys this video, so obviously this is part of my job. But when I was 14 and 15, before I started making YouTube videos that were Rooster Teeth related and started, I guess, making money off their content, <laughs> like, no one else was paying my first membership for me. I paid it. Like, I paid it out of my own pocket myself. If you want things in this world, they are going to cost you money. That is just a lesson that you can learn right now at your 14, 15, or 16 year old self. Like, the time is now. You are not entitled or deserving of getting something other people pay for, right? That is creative work for free just because you can't afford it. Like, this is the type- like, this is the type of people who ask artists for free commissions because they're a teenager and can't pay. Like, no, that's not how it works. You can't just get stuff for free that is somebody else's creative labor, like, you know, games or, again, commissions or, like, to get early access to the show. And again, it is early access. You can still watch it for free. You are not- it's not like you have to pay to see the episode at all. You just have to pay for getting, like, the privilege of seeing it early. And again, it's a privilege. It's not something that is necessary, right? And I don't- I don't know why people think this, to be honest, because it's like, y'all wouldn't say this about clothes, or y'all wouldn't say this about, like, makeup, or any of that, or shoes, or, you know, like, the shoplifting community of Tumblr, they might say that, but spoiler alert, guys, that's illegal, <laughs> you know? Like, 
you don't just go in and they give it to you because you're a teenager and you can't afford it. Like, for some reason when it comes to artistic work, like games or shows or, again, commissions, people think somehow they're entitled getting for things for free when they never go into a store and take a pair of shoes just because they can't. I mean, some people do, but that's shoplifting and it's illegal, right? And I can't imagine having an ego of that size. I'm personally not for pirating. I pay for everything. I buy all of my soundtracks that I want. I, I listen to musicals, so there's soundtracks. They're not albums. I buy all of the games that I want. I don't think that I've ever pirated anything except for in the circumstance where I already owned it and wanted to play something on an emulator because I couldn't stream it. So, for example, I bought Kingdom Hearts 2 on the PS2 or whatever. And I wanted to stream the game, and so I used an emulator, but I already bought the physical copy. I just wanted it on my computer. I think that that's okay, right? Or if you very much cannot find it anymore, like it's a very obscure old game that used to be run on the computer, and you can only download it through a ROM, and they're not making it anymore. If they're not making it anymore, the publishers and the people that made it don't get any money, so like, that's okay. But like... I feel like pirating somebody else's creative work is horrible and scummy, and if you really think you deserve it, go pirate it. But don't ask RT and expect them to, like, make everything for free. I think that's just ridiculous. Like, don't expect Rooster Teeth, a business, to just give things to you, okay? And just a side note, but I think it's funny because I feel like people want RT to be the ones to do it, like, make stuff either for free or available like that because they know pirating is bad and they don't want to do it so they want Rooster Teeth to do it like unofficially to make themselves feel better so they don't need to pirate anything. Does that make sense? Like it's basically like, ah, oh, pat on the back. I'll ask Rooster Teeth to give me something for free so I don't pirate it because pirating, like deep down, they know that it's wrong, right? That's just my take on it, okay? And that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. I'm pretty riled up if you guys haven't noticed. I usually don't get so riled up in my videos, but yeah, I'm a little upset at how people are commenting about this because there are valid concerns and the valid concerns are the closed captions right the reach of ruby like the future of getting new people in and like we said at the beginning reactions right if you make videos obviously you have a very valid concern but the rest of these people that are complaining i don't think any of these concerns are valid i don't think they have any place in the fandom and like at the end of the day you guys can still watch the show for free okay but like i said if you're too like put off by making a, a free site membership okay you're casual and you won't give the money anyway so it's like again i don't want to like speak on behalf of rt but no business cares about non paying customers unless they can convert them to paying customers, right? So that's just my perspective on all this. And I'm kind of done. I think I'm okay. Uh, I got it all out. And I don't think anybody that watches me really has that attitude because I don't see it very often. But looking at Twitter, it's a fucking dumpster fire. Don't do it. I don't suggest it. It will make you a little upset, <laughs> right? But anyway, I'm pretty done. I'm pretty much done. I hope that this helped. Um, it made me feel better anyway. Um, if you guys agree or disagree, I'll try to respond to you guys nicely. Obviously, if you have a disagreeing opinion, I'm not gonna yell at you, but at the same time, like, unless you can make a valid argument for what you're saying, it's like, y'all are- y'all are lost on me, you know what I mean? But anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you later. Bye, guys! Hello everybody, it is Kellaxon here. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember that you guys should become $10 patrons over on Patreon, or any level of patrons as $10 patrons get to request uh, videos that we get to do our $5 patrons get early access to basically uh, all of the content uh, that we uh, put out among other rewards and our $1 patrons get access to our Discord server, so if any of this interests you, you guys should check it out. Bye guys.